In today's video, we're back with some updated NHL trade and some free agent rumors as well. Some moves that the Winnipeg Jets might be considering to help their blue line with all the losses they've had there this offseason. Should the Minnesota Wild be considering talking to Vegas about Nikita Gusev? And also, is it time for the Capitals to consider trading goaltender Braden Holtby? We'll get into all the latest coming up next. So welcome back here to Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a variety of interesting topics to discuss today that could result in some NHL trades or some potential free agent signings here as well. There will be an article down in the description as well, outlining where most of the topic of discussions have come from here for today. Now let's get started with the Winnipeg Jets. Now apparently they're interested in making a couple of different moves here to improve their blue line, uh, primarily either through free agency or through trade. They apparently have their eyes on a couple different defenders, one being unrestricted free agent defenseman Jake Gardner, as well as Rasmus Ristolainen of the Buffalo Sabres. Now of course, uh, Gardner's a left shot defenseman, while Ristolainen is a right shot. They probably could use a variety of one on each side here, as they've certainly uh, had some major blows here to the blue line between trading Jacob Truba and what they've lost here through free agency with Tyler Myers and Ben Chirot, both exiting the other teams uh, as unrestricted free agents here. So obviously they need to make some moves, but if they go down the UFA route, they have Jake Gardner sitting there who's looking for a contract. The big thing with him apparently that many people speculate at least is that he's looking for more term and more money than many teams were willing to offer. But it's kind of hard to wrap your head around the possibility here that uh, other guys like Tyler Myers might end up getting paid much more term or money than a guy like Gardner who very well might end up having to accept to get his next contract. But others believe that he's just being very patient and that he's kind of waiting for that right opportunity with the right term and contract to kind of present itself before he makes his ultimate decision here heading in to next season. But the Winnipeg Jets certainly uh, have some other areas kind of tying things down right now, and that's big-time RFAs like Patrick Laine and Kyle Connor. There really hasn't been much traction on either front that we have news to report on, uh, as well as many other RFAs around the league, and that's kind of tying up what they may or may not have available uh, via their cap space here. So some teams are kind of reluctant to make too many other moves until they have these looked after. And most of the top tier restricted free agents don't have arbitration rights. So there's really no uh, end date per se to know when these situations will be resolved and contracts will be in place or how those are gonna go down. So I do believe that they're kind of weighing out both options. If they look to the trade route here, like Ristolainen and Buffalo, my only concern is even though there's interest on the Winnipeg side, uh, the Buffalo Sabres probably would want a number two center. And that's not something that the Winnipeg Jets are gonna be able to provide. Uh, they could look to another winger. Like for example, I know Matthew Perot is a winger that they would certainly be willing to part with here to kind of bolster other areas of their team, especially their blue line. Uh, there's been some mention about Nikolai Ehlers maybe being on the trade market, but I'm not really sure he's really a player they'd really want to move, but I guess depending on the deal, it is possible. Uh, they could consider trading Brian Little as well, but he does have a form of a no trade clause which complicates that. So even though they have interest apparently in Ristolainen, they may or may not have the actual parts here desired by the Sabres. It is possible they could consider adding uh, Jack Roslovic into the mix, who is a center. I would think the Sabres would want somebody with more experience because the whole point of them wanting a number two center would be to kind of push a guy like Casey Middlestadt further down the lineup and take the pressure off. And Roslovic's not really any further ahead in his career and his development and what he can take on for a workload or ice time than Middlestadt is. So I'm not really sure that that's the best fit there. But I guess we'll see what Winnipeg does, but apparently they're kind of weighing out both options and deciding which way to go. But I feel like they're kind of handcuffed here until they get these RFA contracts looked after. One of the discussion points in the article I have linked down below as well indicates that the Minnesota Wild probably should be talking to Vegas about Nikita Gusev. Obviously, they're really focused on kind of reshaping that forward group, creating some more offense, and getting Gusev might not be too big of a price tag here. And obviously, one of their top prospects is Kirill Kuprizov, who's yet to come over from the KHL. Having another fellow Russian who he's familiar with very well might help entice him come over. So it could be a longer-term strategy as well. Kind of like what we see going on with the New York Islanders where Lou Lamarillo has brought in Varlamov to hopefully kind of bring Elias Sorokin over. So obviously, like I said, it's a big adjustment for some of these players to come all the way around the world to North America, uh, have a whole different form of lifestyle, play with a new team, new teammates. Everything to them is new. There might be a language barrier to have somebody familiar to them from their home country uh, who can kind of help along with the process, who's already a little bit more acclimated with how things go. Certainly can go a long way to kind of making them comfortable and making the transition go smoother. So there could be that spinoff effect here as well. 
As we know as well, the Minnesota Wild have tried on multiple occasions to trade Jason Zucker uh, over the past number of months, and it's yet to take place. Now, I'm not sure that they would have to include a guy like Zucker to, a guy, to acquire Nikita Gusev. I don't really think the Vegas Golden Knights would be able to take that contract on unless there was a lot of other deals or you know some other moving parts here to kind of free up more cap space for Vegas. Uh, I don't think Vegas would be entirely opposed to bringing Zucker there. I mean, he is from that area, uh, and it would be a good fit, I think, with the Knights. But at the same time, uh, they don't have the cap space right now. So they need to unload Gusev because they can't afford to pay what he's looking for. They're offering $2 million, apparently. Gusev wants 4 He's only looking for a shorter-term contract. I really can't see why another team wouldn't take a chance. He very well could prove to be quite an offensive player. Could end up being a steal of a deal here uh, if he turns out to play anything like he's performed in the KHL. I mean, he could be the next Panarin. It may not be. Might be a lower level. Could be a bust. Who knows? But really, based on what you've seen in the past and what he's put up in the KHL, I do think it's well worth the risk on a short-term contract. But we'll see if Minnesota follows through and talks to Vegas here. But he would be a good fit. He's you know he's only 27 years old, so he's young enough. He's got the, the offensive capabilities that what they're looking for as well. And they very well might be able to acquire him uh, for like, you know, maybe a second round pick and maybe a prospect. It shouldn't be a huge price tag. And they could still potentially trade Zucker if they decide they still want to do that or not. I mean, general manager Paul Fenton has been kind of making some moves that I'm not sure always make sense. He seems to be pretty set on trading Zucker. He's already tried twice and it's blowing up both times. So we'll see if the third time is a charm or Zucker and whether or not they talk to Vegas about Gusev. But obviously that probably would be a wise move for Minnesota as well as some other teams who can't afford to pay him to take that chance and really give their team that offensive boost that they so badly need. Now I also want to touch on the possibility here should the Washington Capitals consider moving goaltender Braden Holtby. Now a couple of reasons why hear me out it's not has nothing to do with his play obviously he's been a terrific goaltender for them helped them win the Stanley Cup not long ago but a couple things to keep in mind here. One, he's a pending unrestricted free agent. He's entering the final year of his contract, and he's had a really solid career so far, so you know he's likely going to be looking for a raise. He's coming off a contract where he's making $6 million, which is pretty, you know, a pretty sizable amount, but we've recently seen the goaltender market really change a little bit this offseason with that hefty contract the Florida Panthers gave to goalie Sergei Bobrovsky. You know right off the bat, it's going to be one of the main comparables that his agent's going to be using for negotiations. Obviously, by the time things come to next summer, if nothing were to happen here and they didn't start looking at a contract until next summer for Braden Holtby, obviously, we're only going to be one year into the Bobrovsky contract. It's not really a lot of time or enough you know, really proof to say that it's a bad contract or a big overpayment or anything like that. Uh, but if you look at Bobrovsky and Holtby's careers here, uh, they're the same age. Uh, they have very, very similar regular season statistics. There's not much difference at all. Uh, and you can also look at their playoff records that Holtby has a better record. He's performed better in the playoffs and has a Stanley Cup to his name, where Sergei Bobrovsky uh, has lost more games than he's won and has only won one playoff series. So obviously, Holtby could likely command more money, in my opinion, than Bobrovsky, or at least comparable at the very least. Uh, so obviously, is the Washington Capitals going to be able to afford and want to pay Braden Holtby $10 million? It's probably unlikely that they could really swing that given their salary cap situation. Now, the other thing to keep in mind in consideration here is the upcoming expansion draft. Now, right now, I think it's fair to argue that the Capitals' top prospect is goaltender Ilya Samsonov. Uh, Samsonov really could be the goalie of the future here. And if they get to the point that they were to re-sign Holtby, uh, and then they also have Phoenix Copley, uh, they also are going to have to have one goalie protected in the expansion draft, and they're going to have to have at least another goalie or two exposed. And really, are they going to want to take the chance to leave Samsonov exposed in the expansion draft? Or if they were to extend Holtby, one of the two would have to be exposed in the expansion draft, and they would be at high risk to lose either one for nothing. So... It, you know, it's certainly something to take in consideration. You see a lot of these contracts, especially when it comes to backup goalies or minor league goalies that have some initial experience. You notice that a lot of them are going to be signed through to that past the point of the expansion draft just because they're going to have to be, uh, you know, have a certain number of players available for the Seattle franchise to select from. So there's certainly a lot of strategies now behind a lot of these contracts as 
teams start to think ahead and prepare for that upcoming event here, uh, which really, if you think about it, isn't all that far away. The article discussing this possibility here kind of suggests that the Capitals probably should wait and see how the season goes first. If for any reason things are not off to a good start and things aren't looking promising for them to either make the playoffs or to have a deep playoff run, maybe consider it later into the season. Uh, obviously, as we know, uh, some of their top players are still performing quite well, like Alex Ovechkin, but obviously at some point he's likely going to slow down. But when's that time going to be? We really don't know. And we've also seen a lot of other teams, especially in the Metropolitan Division, really make a lot of significant improvements, or at least it looks that way on paper, at least over this offseason. So that division is going to be ultra competitive, even more so than it has been previously, and very well might be proven difficult for the Capitals to continuously you know, be near the top and be a playoff team. So if things started to slide, maybe they should consider trading him at that point. That's where the article was going. But at the same time, I will say this, trading a goaltender of Holtby's caliber later into the season is almost impossible. It's not that often you see a big-time starting goaltender be a trade deadline acquisition. It's one of the tougher positions to kind of change teams and have that kind of acquisition be made at the deadline. It's not something you usually see. When it comes to goaltending, the most common trades you see is like, you know, second or third string goaltenders being traded as added depth or insurance in case the starter who got them to the playoffs happens to fall down to injury or not be playing well or something to that effect. But it's not real common. So really, I think if they don't trade him heading into the season, they're either A, at risk to lose him as a free agent next year, uh, or if they do decide to re-sign him and extend him, they're putting themselves at risk to either lose himself or Samson up to the expansion draft uh, in a short time frame here. So I guess let me know what your thoughts are. Is Braden Holtby going to be looking for a similar contract to Bobrovsky? Is that too much money for the Capitals? So should they trade him while he has a year left on his contract and maybe get a decent return? prepare for the future as they turn to guys like Copley and Samson off to take over or do they try to get through this season maybe consider extending him but then with all the expansion draft considerations what's really the best move here I mean between the contract he's going to be looking for and the expansion draft it certainly raises more questions than answers and I'd love to hear what your thoughts are down in the comment section the unrestricted free agent market as well doesn't have a whole lot of other names left on it. We did discuss some of them here today, including Jake Gardner. Of course, we still got veterans like Joe Thornton and Patrick Marlowe, Justin Williams. I would imagine Thornton and Marlowe, if they do sign, is going to be with San Jose, probably on a short-term one-year contract. Justin Williams probably goes back to Carolina or retires is my guess on that one. But you do have some other guys like Patrick Maroon, for example. You got Derek Broussard, defenseman Ben Hutton as well. So there's certainly some interesting pieces still floating out there. And at this point, a lot of these guys are probably going to have to sign for a lot less money than a lot of us might have thought they would get heading into free agency here. So let me know some thoughts as well on where you think some of these veterans are going to end up here with a new contract before the summer is out. Of course, as always, let me know your thoughts and comments on everything we discussed here today down in the comment section and we'll continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notification bell so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time. Thank you.